just a brief uh, reminder of what is Research Corner about. Uh, this is just a platform that I created to encourage, motivate, support research students in early career academics. So, so that because there is a lot of us that I've 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 seen a lot of people who have really they are done with the modules and they just need to do the thesis and then they are stuck there for so long. So that is one of the things that have really motivated me. And also discuss uh, topics related to research from both the student's perspective, the supervisor's perspective, because a lot of times um, you can be blind if you're only looking from one perspective. You will think, why is the supervisor like this? But is they are also like, why is the student like this? So it's just sometimes to have those kind of um, ideas of and a kind of informal platform, allowing uh, another thing is to share ideas, knowledge, skills, as well as meet uh, fellow students. So maybe you are in a specific field, you are looking for students, especially if you are doing distance, um, you could be isolated, you are alone, maybe you are registered with a, a, a university that is abroad or so, you don't even know your people in your class until you have, uh, unless if you have some contact, so you, you just want to be part of a community. So this is one of the objectives for Research Corner. So my dream is to see Africa advancing through research. And I think this can only be done if we understand why we must do proper research instead of doing it for the sake of getting a degree because you are obliged, you need to graduate, you must just get it done. So we must do it so that it can advance. So in today's presentation, um, this is the, the main things that we are going to cover, just a little bit on the definition of what is a publication, why must you publish, the types of articles, uh, research articles that are usually publishing, uh, choosing how do you choose a journal to publish in, how do you draft a manuscript. I'm not going to go into the details of uh, drafting, that will be the next session um, after this and then submitting the review process, what happens when you submit, what happens behind um, this, that system that you click on this online. I, I was, I'm very fortunate to have been um, really seen all parts of the review process as a, an author, as a reviewer, also as a journal for some, um, as a journal for some, um, I mean, an editor for some journal. Then uh, what happens when the manuscript is accepted? What are the common errors that you are likely to face? And this also has to do with um, what can get you rejected. Is my data good enough? What are some of the key ways that you might come across when you are talking about publishing? What is illegal not to do? And then the summary. So the summary, I was looking for a really good word that says, you know, Shuambo, it will be etualem, but I couldn't find other than uh, using summary. So that is just more like re emphasizing uh, the key points or things that might have not come out. So to start with, um, what is a publication? So a publication can be a book or magazine, newspaper, uh, and document in which information or stories are published or the act of making information or stories available to people in printed or electronic form. So this is a um, the second one is a, a definition from the Cambridge Dictionary. So really it's just a way of communicating. It can be a book, it can be what, but most of us we are used to what we call the journal publication. So those are, what is a scientific journal? This is a periodical channel. Periodic in a sense that it occurs at regular frequencies, maybe every quarter of the year or every uh, month or whatever, but it has a certain period that it's only published after this period. And uh, it's the main purpose for this is to disseminate information and um, 
especially the scientific knowledge in forms of results, advances in the research finding. So once you have your results, you need to communicate. One of the things that is really important with the research is that you can't uh, do something and then you just keep it to yourself. You need to tell others, you need to communicate to others, and you need others to also look through whether have you missed something. And this we do in publication through um, scientific journals. Uh, and you can have other publications like books that are also peer reviewed. It means that you have people that are going through your work um, it at most minimum, usually two people going through your work and then they give you comments, where can you, uh, maybe did you miss something? Did you really interpret your data as it should be? And, and so on. So it's the main reason for publishing is communicating results that you have found out. So there are different types of, of um, research articles or publications. We have what we call uh, letters or rapid short communications. These are intended to make quick and early communication of significant or original advances without including too much detail. So you just give, it's, it's gonna be like a one page or two pages short communication and that's all they publish. They have this very short. Then you have review papers. So this is uh, where you summarize recent development on specific topic uh, without introducing new data. So I think most of us here, at least we know what is literature review, right? So um, review papers would be a paper that you write based on your literature. So say for instance, you want to look at a certain methodology on how things can be done. And then you, you now look through a publication, reviewing all the different methods. And then you, you combine a publication, just comparing what you have learned from all these uh, publications that you have uh, read. So then you, you have a review paper. So you don't, you don't collect new data you extract data from already published work, and then you combine it together, you compare and contrast, and then you get a paper from them. Then we have full articles. Uh, this contains uh, significant data, detailed developments and outcomes. So this is now the most common um, articles um, that we, we publish original data. Say, for instance, you are doing your master thesis or PhD. This is the type of research papers that are expected from you. And then we have uh, research elements. These ones, they enable you to publish a research output, such as your data, or maybe you, you develop a new method or a new software, or you have uh, videos, and you, you give it a little bit more details than um, full article. So you have an element of your research that you are publishing, not everything. So all these publications, they tell a story uh, and they're trying to put forward findings of investigation and a new understanding of um, what you have understood from either from your review, from your work, if it's a new original paper. So the difference from each is how this story is going to be told and what evidence are you using to back up the story that you are telling. So the assumptions sometimes are, are done and then they have to be clearly stipulated to say, these are the assumptions I, I have in this review. Say for instance, you are looking at methodology, but you only look at specific uh, group of methods. So that is something is kind of an assumption that you have not looked at everything, but you only concentrated on this one. And why do we publish? They are really, really uh, several reasons. One is that we need to put out our ideas. So we need our ideas to be synthesized. my goodness. The Okongwe need did not allow that word. Uh, but we want somebody to look at the idea that you have and then they must have an opinion, give you uh, whether is that 
um, is that doable? Is it okay? They give you their opinion about the ideas that you are bringing forward. Secondly, you can publish also to share a review or possibly contribute to an understanding of, of a subject better, or maybe you are validating certain results that are there. So you want to share that information. You want to share that, okay, there is this method and I've also used it and it's working. I have used it, maybe this method is only way, uh, has only been used in this type of environment, but now I've tried it in this environment, it's also working. So you are sharing and validating the, that that method is working. Advance in ideas, you want your idea to advance, put out there. Professional advancement, this one could be like a requirement. For instance, for us in academia, it's a requirement for you to publish. So for you, if you want to be promoted, you need to publish. So it's kind of forced. And for most of the universities now also, you are required to publish before you can graduate, especially for PhD. So it's, a, it's required for your professional development. And then of course, visibility, if you want people in your field to know about you, you want people in your field to know about your ideas, you want people in your field uh, and, uh, and, and to, to really use your methodology, this is the only way. There is no way that uh, you are going to uh, send this uh, information to somebody. You will only send it to people that you know. But if you publish everybody in your field, is having access to that information and they are able to use it. So it's it's quite useful. So how do we choose for a journal, right? There are several methods that one can follow. I, I, I try to do it differently and um, it, it really depends on what is it that you want. But there are things that I think here, yeah, I just present things that you need to take in consideration. Uh, first of all, you need to decide whether what type of article are you going to publish. Is it a full-length paper? Is it a letter? Is it a review paper? Maybe you, you really did a very good literature and you want to write it. So you need to decide what type of um, article you want to publish. And then um, you, you check your reference list, right? And say, okay, um, which, wh wh where am I, the publications that I'm reading, where are they coming from? Are they coming from mainly, you will see there is a trend that you are reading mainly this. So most times you want to publish in a like way you are reading from. It means that these are things that are important in your field. These are things that are adding value to your work. So you want your work also to be in those journals. And then um, you have also to check now whether those journals that you are now, you have jotted down, by now you have jotted some down. Is it, um, can you anyone publish or is it only by invitation? Because there are some journals where they only publish when you have been invited to give information. So. If you have been uh, invited to write, say maybe they see that you are very good in this specific field, they will ask you, can you please write for us a paper, a review paper on this, or in this method, we want a paper. So then you cannot just want to submit it. Some only, uh, journals only accept articles after inviting the submission. And then some uh, journals, Maybe it's a special issue. If you, you attend a certain conference, you should have, uh, you are only able to submit to that issue. So you have to check those details. And then you have to check the journal metrics. What is the journal metrics? This, uh, like, what do we say, the ranking of journals to say, is a journal good enough? Is it doing well? Uh, so you want to check the performance of that uh, journal. You want to check how long do they take to review papers? Uh, what is the timelines from the, the date of submission to the date that the article will be published? Because some of the journals, they take quite long, some are faster. And especially if you're a student, you have a timeline. You want to start to finish your studies in a particular period. So you can't take a journal uh, which will take maybe a whole year for you to publish. You want something that's done within six months or so. 
though you should not um, only try to, that should not be the only motivation, it's something that you need. And then you check the performance. So it also help you to check what is the most appropriate journal for your article. So things like what is the scope of that specific um, journal that you want, the scope meaning like what type of content are they able to cover. You look at the editorial board to say, who are the editors? Are they really representing me? Will I be? Say, for instance, we have uh, one of the journals where I'm an editor is the Journal of African Air Science. If we are talking about scope, we the journal's name is already Journal of African Air Science. So if you go and submit any other work that's not from Africa, it means that you're out of scope because this one to particularly focus on the African Air Sciences. So that is one of the things that you need to look at the scope that you are um, of the journal. And then you look at things like high in, uh, impact factors and stuff. I will explain later what is an impact factor. So what I usually do, I try also to put my article, I mean my topic in the Google Scholar and just see where are the most of the these topics that are close to mine are likely to be published. And it also helps you to see if it has already been published. Maybe somebody already worked on that. And, but of course, by now, if uh, if you want to publish, you have some data, you know somebody did not work on it. But it's Google Scholar is something that I usually like to do. And um, there is actually now a new cool thing I just learned. Uh, there is what they call the journal finder with most of the publishers. Most of the publishers, they have a journal finder, but it requires you to, to know, uh, I mean, to have kind of uh, the title and the abstract. It's not your final abstract, but you must have something about your work that people can use to determine where to publish it. Say, for instance, um, it, this is just, if you just go on, on Google and search for, for journal finder, you will find a list that these are all publishers. You have Elsevier, you have Willy, you have Sprinker, you have M, um, MDPI. These are all uh, mostly publishers and they have all now in, incorporated this function in their website because all the publishers, they publish several uh, journals. One publisher will have hundreds of uh, journal articles that they're, I mean, not articles, but journals that they are publishing. So they will give you an indication. The only thing that is, I think, a bit challenging with this is that you must compare with uh, each publisher to say, I put this same information in Willy, I put it in Elsevier, I put it in Springer, and then you take out the highest, and then you, you now go in the details of looking at specific journals yourself. So, but it's a very cool thing um, that I think most of the publishers have developed. So this is an example of one of my papers that is already actually published. I just took the abstract and then I put it in uh, LCBS journal finder and the title, and they 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 give already the number of journals that are matching my paper. Where could I publish? Maybe about thirty nine journals, and then they put them on the ranks to say number one is here. And then you look at this is now what I'm saying. You need to look at when you are looking for a journal. Look at the site score. It must be high. Impact factor must be high. But if you are starting, um. You must try to not go for the highest, maybe two uh, impact factor of two to three or, or, or so, depending really on how good your work is. You can be a first time author, but your work is really good to put in effort. So you must not go for the lowest impact. And then you look at the acceptance rate, how how often, so for instance, this is one of the top journals in, in, in my field, Journal of Hydrology they have acceptance rate of 26%. It means that out of all the manuscripts that they have been submitted, only 26% are usually accepted. How long it takes before you get the first um, review? They are saying um, average six, uh, seven weeks, it's not 
always perfectly seven weeks, but that is their average. And then after acceptance, how long it will take before the article is online. So this information is always available on, on this uh, journal finders when they recommend. So if maybe you think there is this uh, fee of uh, publishing and whether you are, I will explain what is open access, I think, but for sometimes it can be quite expensive, but it does not mean that you cannot publish with these people. So maybe if you want open access, you look for another uh, one, which is likely to be cheap, but the amounts, they change with different courses. If you are in natural sciences, uh, I'm sorry, it's going to be expensive. If you are in, in um, medicine, I'm sorry, it's going to be also expensive. But if you are in uh, social, it's a little bit better comparing to uh, natural sciences. So then the next thing I'm looking at is drafting the manuscript. Uh, how do you draft uh, the manuscript? What is crucial? is to read the, the journal's guide for author. I don't know how to emphasize this because a lot of times what makes people to be rejected is just not following instruction. Just reading and follow instruction, that's the weakness that really plays a role in a lot of people getting the rejection. Just say, say for instance, the, the, that specific journals, they want the result and discussion combined. You, you go write result and discussion separated because you did not follow the instruction. So it's very crucial to download it and read it. If you have to print it out, print it out, highlight. In the guidelines, they are usually also talking about the formatting issues, uh, that some of the journals, they have templates that you can use, you can download, and this is available whether it's for ISOs or, or Windows or what. You can download a template and then you just put in your information in that template so that you don't have issues with uh, like things like font. You don't want to be rejected because you use the wrong font or you use the wrong referencing style. Please, these are all things that um, are crucial. The figure quality is something that's also quite crucial, especially for us who use a lot of figures. You need to make sure that your figures are good. In, in the guide, usually they will give you what is the amount of DPI. And the good thing nowadays, you have Google, you have YouTube. If there is something in the guideline you don't understand, please just try to understand what is it, what does it mean? And then, um, so when you draft the manuscript, it is usually follows the normal um, scientific writing procedure. You have a title, you have uh, who are the authors. Uh, the authors, you only put people that have made intellectual contribution to the research. It's, those are the people that should be credited and they should have gone through the manuscripts that, for them to approve. They should have gone, they should have reviewed uh, the manuscript, you can't, just because you went in the field with someone, uh, you add them, but when you, you draft, you did not even share that they will be surprised to see their name, that they are part of the authors. Please don't do that. You must inform them, give them a chance to comment on the draft before you submit it. It's also usually you are required to have a keywords list Keywords that are easy. So if you read a, an article, most of them you find some keywords there. They are used to I, to look for. If you are you type in those, whether it's Google, Google Scholar, or any other search engine, you are able to see. So you must develop some keywords that um crucial for your study. Usually the study area, the main key things in your title. Um, and then you should have an abstract. I'm not going to go into the details of what should be in an abstract, what should be. This is going to be the next session because today we just want to get an overall uh, idea of, of how to draft, I mean, how what is the process, right? And this can also be a little bit different depending. I'm trying to see if I can get somebody from social science to do the social science um, drafting of manuscript, and then maybe somebody from natural science, because there's a little bit of some differences there, but they follow the same scientific role. Um, then um, what is key I've highlighted there is that 
illustrations, you must have good um, images, good figures, good tables, formatted properly, formatted uh, consistent, um, having the same uh, formatting and, and stuff like that. You must acknowledge the funding bodies usually. And this is also where you can acknowledge people who have helped you in some way, but have not done the um, directly writing or they have not contributed enough to be part of the author list. You can acknowledge them. So then uh, ethical issues becoming very uh Crucial, some of the journals, they can even ask you for the ethical clearance. So make sure that you have that sorted. And then the quality of the language. We are not, um, I, I'm speaking especially here in Namibia, in Africa, we are not um, born, what is? what do they say? The first language, English is not our first language. So it's okay for you to get somebody to edit, not for you to somebody to write, but to edit your work so that they look at the language, the quality. We have a lot of people that are teaching English and they offer these services. So please just do your best. You don't want to be rejected. Your content is so good, but uh, because of the language, people are not getting what they're trying to say. So you want it, that one uh, worked out. And then the co-authors input, you need to always make sure that they are included. How do you put who is gonna come first? It depends sometimes between disciplines, uh, but in most cases, the person who does the most, who compile the draft, who does, uh, can be the, the, the main author. And for you, if you are a student, most times it's, it's you are the main author. There are some universities in the world, um, in some of the parts of the world where the supervisor is always the first author, but this depends on the university in which you are in. And then you submit, uh, when you submit uh, the manuscript, you, you have to write a letter to the editor expressing the need for you to publish and why. But just it's just a normal. It's not so. It's not really that deep. You just write something about why do you think this is worth. Is is there some new interesting data you want to publish and and um then uh when you submit again there's usually a link in which you submit. So just follow the instruction create login detail, and then you, you, you follow the author's uh, guide and you are able to submit. Some of the things that you also need to check out for is things um, about instruction. Say for instance, the figures, how are the formats? Some of the journals, maybe they want these figures to be embedded in the text. Some of them, they want them to be uh, attached as JPEG, or some of them, they want them to be attached as PDF. So, you just have to find out and, and follow uh, the instruction. Uh, then you have uh, the review process. What happens behind when you submit, say you, you are done, you feel good about you, then you submit, uh, what happens there? So this is now what happens behind. You have um, first thing, each manuscript is checked for plagiarism, so please reference. Don't plagiarize people's work. Uh, even if it's your own work, don't plagiarize. Say, for instance, you are doing a PhD, you're working in the same study area, and then uh, you you have different um, you have different papers, but on the same study area, you cannot just copy. Uh, the study area as it was in the first manuscript and then you put it exactly as it is in the second manuscript. You need to change that. It's not completely changed from scratch, but you need to change it to uh, fit that specific paper. So that is still plagiarism. Even if you wrote it, it's still plagiarism. Uh, then you usually, the first people that are getting these are editors. They will look at the manuscript, whether it fits, and until it's approved, it's not an article, no, it's a manuscript. So until uh, then, you have the manuscript, uh, whether it's fit for the journal, it's in the scope, and, and, and then if it fits, then they will appoint two reviewers, usually minimal two. If there are issues, you might even get more. If, for instance, one reviewer says reject, one says uh, what, you might get more reviewers. 
Uh, so the reviewers, they helped to determine the validity, the significance, the originality of the work, and they can suggest for improvements to the manuscript. And once the, 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 you get these comments, they are sent to you, until you satisfy the reviewers and the editor, it will be a back and forth process. It can go as many times. I was recently, uh, one of my friends said she, she had how many times? Was it more than 10 times back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So um, just between her, the reviewers, and, and sometimes including also sending it to the co-authors their opinion. So that's why when people publish, sometimes they you see us going on about my publication, my publication, the effort that it takes for you to publish. But if you are lucky, maybe you get one or twice, um, then it's accepted, and then you go. So most times the reviewers, there are three, um, common uh, answers. So it's either it's accepted, you can go ahead, it's published, or it's accepted with revisions, major or minor revisions. This is when you maybe you just need to work on how you interpreted the data or a certain section of the, the manuscript. And it can also be rejected to say, no, this is either not up to standard, it's plagiarized, it's um, what? It's out of scope. Maybe we are talking about geochemistry here, but you want to come talk about geophysics, you know, if, if I might use an example from my field. So this is can be a, a point for you to reject. I, I remember once they, I had a, one time, there's a, an author where I was a reviewer in this case, and the person, what they did was, Say, for instance, my name is Joseph. One name is Josephine, the other one is Toli Mevara. So we know you are talking about the same person. So it's just the same variable, sort of. So they just change a already published paper. They put, instead of Josephine, they put Toli Mevara. So that is, it's, it will be picked up by the plagiarism checker. So please don't do those, those things just because you want your number of publication to be high. So after the submission most times you can follow most of the uh, publishers now they're very good system you get a reference number uh and you can follow your article to say is it now now it's with the editor okay now the editor has found the reviewers it's with the reviewers now it's back from the reviewers the editor maybe is yet to send me the comments and you can follow up when you think that um substantial time has passed and you have not heard from these people um then you um usually you receive a, an email with a reference number and if you are conducting the journal for that you have to use that reference number uh if you are returning once you get comments and you are have you are in this process of back and forth with the journal uh you must use track changes and you must also have a document response to reviewers this response to reviewers is like a table of uh, comments that most of you probably have seen in your in your thesis or in your proposals and stuff, where you have the comment and then you have how have you responded to that um, comment. Because there are times that you don't agree with the reviewers. You can say, no, I don't agree with here because there must be a because. Eh? You can't just uh, say, I, I don't agree and that's it you have to have the justification on why. Uh, then the process continue until the uh, reviewers and editors are satisfied and it's accepted. So when it's accepted, it's your lucky day, you are happy, um, then congratulations, your article has been accepted, it will be published. So the article will be uh, first, it will be in press. So these are articles that uh, are just published online. So, cause most of the journals they still print out um, they have this uh, time that they print out the, the articles. And there is also this uh, proof reading, which is very, very uh, important because it comes in a short period. Usually you get maybe 24 hours or 48 hours to do this proof reading. Um, so if once your manuscript is accepted, you have to be checking your email. If they send you for proofreading, you go through, they formatted it in the way that your article will look like, and then you will have 
uh, uh, to proofread and see everything is where it's supposed to be, especially with us with figures, you will make sure that it's the way it is. And then, um, so once you publish, the work belongs to the publisher. So you have issues with copyright. You can't just be sharing it and doing however you want. You need to make sure you follow, you respect the copyright for that publisher. So most of the journals, they give you um, personalized link uh, to give you maybe 50 days of free access or 50 uh, people, the first 50 people can download for free, especially if you do not pay for open access. And so share these links and also it helps people because they, they give this um, statistic of how often the article has been cited, how often has been downloaded. So when your article is new, please promote your work. You, you wrote it, it's a good work, you want it to make an impact, so you, you need to promote it. Uh, also, share it with your colleagues, your peers and, and so you can also then monitor your impact to see whether the article you wrote is it really making an impact or is just collecting dust okay not so dust because it's on the internet but is it making an impact so that for your next article you try to improve so that you you want your work to make an impact you want your work to be cited but of course you can't force people to cite it will sometimes it take time before um, the article picks up. One of my, my co-authors, one of my last papers, actually, I haven't published quite in a while, is that um, he, I think he has been following up and was texting me that, oh, our paper is finally picking up. It was not being cited, but that is a 2019 paper, but it's only now getting a little bit of, uh, of citing. So it doesn't come fast, but with time, but it's also a room for improvement to say, this is something that we maybe need to work on. Uh, so some of the common errors that are found in this also leading to rejection. One, uh, not following instruction. Uh, this is really, really, um, it's, it's, I think it's self-explanatory, just follow instruction. And secondly, uh, out of scope, uh, if you are out of scope in terms of the subject, like in terms of content, you are people are looking at chemistry, you, you come with physics, or uh, people are looking at um, a certain continent, you come from a different continent, that can be out of context. Um, and then only data analysis or no novelties or meaningful findings. So if there is nothing really uh, that is coming from, it's just you applying a method that has been applied 100 times and what is new, what is it that you are contributing? So then it becomes, it won't be accepted. If it's low quality, low quality in terms of how it's written, in terms of content, um, in terms of a lot of things so that can help um, in terms of uh, low quality, even your images, how they are and all these things contribute to the quality of your paper. Incorrect formatting. So if you use a wrong formatting, you know, the people, uh, one of the things I must highlight, the editors, the reviewers, they are doing this for free. We don't get paid. We don't get paid to be a reviewer. You don't get paid to be an editor. So they are already using their free time and what? you They don't want extra work. So if you come with your incorrect format, the person who just don't have time, they will send it back. Um, then we have also similarity in text. Even with your own thesis, you need to be careful. So this is why you see most of the published work, uh, if you see a, a PhD by publication, the, the chapters are much more expanded comparing to the, uh, the publication. So, so that you, you, you avoid uh, this duplication. Then we have... Um, some technical reasons on why you can get a rejection. So if you have wrongful analysis, like your interpretation is just totally off or how you have plotted your data is off, yes, then uh, you will be rejected. It's not correct information. People cannot share uh, wrong information. Unclear hypothesis, what is it that you are trying to do? What is it? What is the point you are trying to bring along? and not enough evidence. Maybe you are claiming something, but your work does not support that. 
So it can be rejected because you don't have enough. You can even be told that maybe collect more samples or interview more people so that we have enough evidence. Currently, your data does not support your conclusion. If you also use a weak methodology, maybe there's a better method that you can use to analyze that data. It can be rejected. Inconclusive results, maybe you just presented, this is what we have done, this is how we have observed, and then there is no, so what? What is it, the conclusion that you, then you can be rejected? And if you are violating research ethics, this is very, it's getting more and more serious, um, especially in some of the fields, like medical fields and, and stuff. You, you need to be very careful. You are dealing with people, you are dealing with maybe animals, you are dealing with the environment. You need to be careful to not violate ethics because journals don't want to be putting out ideas that you can just do as you want. And so just some of the things that are illegally to do, uh, it's illegal to submit your manuscript to more than one journal at a time. Say you are very pressed with time, you are a student, you need to graduate, but you should have uh, already uh, published a uh, certain number of articles. So you want this to really go fast. And then you, you, you go through, maybe you go to Springer, you submit, you go to elsewhere, you choose one journal, you, you submit. It's very much wrong. Never do that at one time, because if they find out, uh, it's going to be a problem for you. Uh, plagiarism, even if it's your own work, you cannot plagiarize. You need to cite you. So in even better, you increase your citation. Don't plagiarize your own, even if it's your own work, or more even for other people. Don't plagiarize people's work. Don't steal people's ideas. Um, A lot of times, People become reviewers and then they just steal uh, somebody's idea. They hold your paper and not uh, send it back so that it comes to you with comments or they don't give you the, the comments they are supposed They use it to, to have their own work and have better uh, because you just missed something instead of giving it to you as a comment. Please don't steal people's idea. It's very wrong if you are a reviewer. And then uh, students, uh, even among your peers, say you have a research group um, and then you see somebody presenting, you like the idea and then you just rush and publish it. Please don't do that, it's very wrong. Um, then we have, uh, if you're a student or maybe you, you did this work when you're a student, a thesis or dissertation and you're associated with the university, you cannot publish without acknowledging and informing the university and the supervisor. If the supervisor is not at that university anymore, once you graduate, the work belongs to the university. They own the work. So you need to inform them that you are publishing because if maybe you left, your supervisor decides to publish and you are busy also publishing, um, the work belongs to the university, please make sure that you involve them. If you can't get hold of them, there must be somebody at the university that you can um, assist you in how to go forward. So some of the key words, um, I'm almost done. I just have, I think, one more slide. Um, so one of the, the, the key words that you come across is this open access, is impact factor, is predatory journals. And then we have indexing of journals. So predatory journals, these are a problem. These are problem journals. If you see there's usually there's these journals that are always sending you emails, uh, submit here your what what, and then you must pay and what what. You must be careful. They are likely to be predatory. The predatory, they are a very uh, great global threat currently. They accept publications for as long as there is no proper quality check that has been done. It is like plagiarism or ethical and what, as long as you are paying, you they will publish your work. And in a lot of institutions, if you want to graduate or you want to be promoted, when they do that evaluation, they will look whether this is a predatory journal, they, it will be checked out. It will not be used in your evaluation. So please don't fall prey. You will see that I have 20 publications, but then they are all predatory. So 
you will, it will not be uh, useful. Please stay away from predatory journals. Then we look at impact factor. So an impact factor is a measure of a number of times an average paper in a journal is cited during the year. So the higher the number of citation that are coming from that specific journal, then the higher the impact factor. So it means that that journal is making an impact generally. So that's how an impact factor is calculated. Sometimes it's, uh, some people don't like it. They say it's what, what, and what, but that's how it's calculated. And it's one of the metrics that you can use to determine whether this is a good journal or not. Usually high impact journals, the higher, the better, but also the more difficult for you to publish. Then we have uh, journal indexing. So one of the way to spot or to help you identify uh, whether this is a, a, a predatory or not, a journal needs to be indexed. So it needs to be associated with a publisher or scopers or, so it's like, uh, indexing is a, a database of scientific journals, having those that are having a good track record and maintaining ethics and the quality in terms of publication. So you have, for all these journals, they, for you to be indexed, you need to follow certain rules and procedure, and then you become part of. So there are different indexing uh, uh, agencies like Scopus, maybe you have heard of Scopus, it's a common one. We have uh, EBSCO, this is also common. You have this SJR, so there are several of them. So they are all recognized. And then last but not least is what is open access? I think we have, all of us have somehow Look for a journal. So if you go right now, you you go, you are not using your university's library or university internet, you search for an article and you are able to get that full PDF. That is an article that has open access. If you are not able to get it freely access online, it means that it's not have it does not have open access. So there are different open access, um, the ones via uh, uh, publisher and some are delayed depending on the publisher's policy and then we have hybrid. So this is where the payment comes in. If you want your article to be published open access, you have to pay. There are some journals that are just open access. So it means whatever you are publishing, you have to pay. But most of the journals, they have two options that you only pay if you want open access. Otherwise, um, you can publish without paying. But you should not be pressured to pay for open access because most of the people that are using uh, journals and articles and what, they are in universities and universities already pay a subscription fee so that that's why it's different. You can look for one paper on Google on your phone now, it will won't get it. And you, then you go on your university, through your university and you have access to that. It's because the university has subscribed, they have already paid for you to be able to access those articles. So that is the main thing. So open access, don't rush for it. Uh, if you have the funds, yes, go for it. But if you don't, uh, please uh, let it uh, just go for normal publishing without open access. So in summary, I just want to highlight the few points to say, don't rush to submit your article for publication. Make sure that you are really satisfied. You are happy yourself. Of course, we, we all know you can never be fully 100% happy. There's always something that ah, I wish I had uh, done something. I need to look, but at least be 80, 85, 90% happy with the work before. Don't rush. Try to, if you are rushing, maybe use the rush in working on the article instead of you submitting it. Um, then uh, select an appropriate uh, publication outlet, uh, depending on the level where you are as an early career, look at the, the, the where you are likely to be accepted, where you look at the acceptance rate must be a little bit high. Um, then you look at the, the scope, what does the journal cover, which areas, so, so that you, you select the right 
uh, journal, and then read the aims, the scope, the author's guidelines for your targeted journal carefully so, so that you don't miss something or you don't hear. No, I heard Josie said that you can publish in this. Josie is not the one writing. So read and understand yourself. And then you have first-hand information, not from them. I have seen somebody have published in this journal. I just go to them and ask, you know, read yourself. Uh, and find out what can you do better. And then we have uh, make a good first impression with your title and abstract. The title is the advertisement for your article. So please make sure you put an effort on it, um, developing a title. I think we have a, a, a recording on YouTube on um, how to choose a research topic. It's one of the questions that popped up in, in, in the registration it could be helpful even in formatting your research title for, for a manuscript. Have a professional editing uh, firm copy edit, not just proofreads, because there are um, people that are just doing uh, proofreading English, but it need be really go to somebody who can edit your work, uh, look at your manuscript, the main text there, list of references, tables and figures. They will give you comments on all of this on how to improve them. And always submit a cover letter with your manuscript. Uh, don't just um, throw in without the cover letter and then address the reviewer's comment very carefully and give reasons. You, you are not forced to do what they tell you to do, but you must have a, a good reason why you are not doing what they are telling you to do because they're an expert in that subject area. And so these are some of the references and uh, okay, not coming out so correctly, but I mean, so, but this is one of my favorite websites, the Research Academy uh, at Elsevier. Even if you just Google Research Academy, Elsevier, you get it. They have a lot of recordings, a lot of notes as on research, selecting a topic, publishing, and all this. They really, uh, you just need to create a profile and login. Uh, you don't pay for anything, and then you will have um, everything really related to research. So uh, that is all for today. Thank you for joining. So. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. This is the channel. Uh, this is if, um, the picture on, on, we currently only have three videos loaded, choosing the right topic, academic writing that was given by Prof. Mapani. And then um, there was a question also in the, in the registration about what are the useful tools that one can use. This is also a, a session that was given by one of my colleague, uh, Naftal on what are the helpful tools, artificial tools that you can use in research. It's a very, really good session that you, you can listen to. And if you want to follow me, uh, please on LinkedIn is a better place. And this is the contact details for this for research corner. Thank you very much. Uh, now we'll allow some questions and discussion. Let me just... Um, give you right to ask i mean to unmute yourself with um ah technology is always you do something i just muted people and Okay, so if you have question, I think you can either raise your hand, you're right in the chat, or you can unmute yourself. Is that, is everything that clear or oh, nobody just wants to go? Okay, yes, Maria. Thank you, you can go ahead. Thank you, doctor, for this um, information that you gave us. I really wish I knew this before, beforehand, because ooh, I went through a lot of trouble 
with my research. Um, I just have a few questions. Mm -hmm. One of them is, um, so let's say I'm starting, a, a, uh, I'm busy with my research. I'm starting maybe one of my, I'm doing one of my research topic. So does that mean that if I want to do, to, to publish in Elsevier, at the beginning, I should already go with the Elsevier um, methods of writing. And if I get rejected and perhaps move to another journal, so I need to now reformat my whole article um, again, or how does that go? And the other question is on the impact factor. Which one is a good impact factor? <laughs> I don't know, since there is a rate there. Okay. Thank you. Over to you, doctor. All right. Thank you. I think I'm not so good at taking a lot of questions at once, so I'll just, I think, deal with one person at a time. Okay. So um, after rejection, it depends on what why you are rejected. If it's the content not good enough, of course, you can improve. If it's maybe the scope, you can submit it. Uh, there is one, there are some apps nowadays that can help you. I can't remember the name of the app, but it's in that session that I was just saying artificial intelligence. I think, is it Penelope or, I'm, I'm not sure, I don't want to give the wrong information, but there are some apps nowadays that can even help you to reformat, to say, okay, I was submit, I submitted this to this journal, but now I want to reformat it to another journal. They can, it can help you, but yes, you need to, completely a reformat but generally most of the article i mean most of the publishers they have more or less the same standard it's the one of the things that i've noticed different is usually the uh the results and discussion whether they are combined some they want you to completely uh, separate them but some they are allow you whether they are combined or not but otherwise, it's not really going to be like you are starting from scratch. It's it's more or less the same. You just need to put it in a, a little bit different format but it's and try to write so that it fits the context of the journal that you are now writing for. So, But you have to format it completely. For impact factor, I have, I'm one of those. I have not been a big fan of uh, really impact factor. Because uh, one of the training I had with one one of the professor from the one of my favorite professor actually in terms of this um, early career he likes to give early career was that um, if his most published work I mean with most cited work was never not always in the most in the highest. Um, impact factor journal. So as long as the paper is good enough, you can have it cited irregardless of where you have published. So I don't want to give an exact number to say, but the higher uh, the impact factor, the more difficult and it's regarded better in comparison to the ones that were low. So it's really, I think it's um, subjective. I think I hope I answered that. Um, we have another hand from Dr. Sam. Hello, doctor. Hello. Hello. Yes, I'm Chico, but innocent. Okay. Yes. Um, I've been following the discussion, mm -hmm. but uh, one of the things that uh, I needed to understand is. Uh, when at times you want to publish, there's this clause that they give to authors that you must have identified four reviewers on your own. And they must be from your different universities. Uh, Hello? Yes, yes, yes. And that has always been kind of a hiccup because you may not know some of the reviewers from these other universities. How do we go about that? Okay. So my advice would be to look at the documents, the, the papers that you are reading. Those, yes. are your, you, those are your possible reviewers. 
And most times, all the docu all the papers, they will always be a contact detail for that person, uh, the, the corresponding author also. So you can use that approach to ah, okay. the right. people that have really uh, worked in that field. Okay. Now we can Thank you so much. To the hand. Thank you. Yeah. Hello, Joe. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, this is Sam. I'm I'm joining you from a Saskatchewan Polytechnic. Um I just want to touch a bit on the the uh, question the first um, person asked the lady about um reformatting a manuscript and sending it to other journals if you are rejected. Yes. Uh, what I want to say is that you need to be confident about what you are doing. It's an idea. Whenever you're writing, have it in mind. Be humble enough that in the field, people know better than you. Somebody you know better than would know something that you don't know, right? So just have it in mind that there are other experts in the field that are going to look at your work. But you own that idea. That idea that you are putting down, it's yours. It's unique enough. You have read thoroughly. You have read widely the literature. And you know these are the hot, the holes in literature. These things are untouched. And I'm going to add it to literature. So you should be confident enough. Usually when you send manuscript to journals and they reject it, they don't reject it without giving reasons. You get what I mean? They wouldn't reject it without giving you any reasons. You have done the formatting and everything, gone through all the hard work and submitted this paper to the journal. You just didn't choose the journal because you decided to hot. You don't decide that this is the journal I'm going to publish, publish my paper in before you start even writing the paper. Write your paper. Forget about all journals. Write your paper as thoroughly and well as you can. And then when you are done, you can look at, you've been reading, and you know the standards of the journals. Look at the articles that are being published in those journals and match those articles to yours, your manuscript, and find out, okay, my paper can go in this journal. Always try, I tell students this, always try to aim at a reasonably high impact journal. You, you can be a novice and publish in very high impact journals if your work is good. You trickle it down. You don't want your, a good paper to go in a very low impact journal and be sitting there. You've done that hard work. So just aim at that high impact journal, put it there. If the rejection comes, it always comes with an opportunity to what, resubmit. You can address some of the comments. Some of the comments you don't just have to take. You have to what, resist some of them because you are, that's your work. Somebody or um, a reviewer may write something that wouldn't really hurt, fall in place with you. You would have to rebut that hurt, reason and hurt, enforce what you are writing. Let what you are writing hurt stay. You should also be humble enough to hurt, revise portions of the manuscript that the, the reviewers are hurt attaching on. So to just summarize what I've said, when it comes to rejection, don't always think that when I'm rejected here, I'll jump to this journal. There is always a chance of resubmitting to the same journal if you are able to address reasonably what those reviewers are telling you to address. And if you address them well, scientifically sound, you can resubmit to the same journal and you have a chance of it being accepted. Thank you. Right, thank you, Doc. Um, that's a very good, I don't want to dilute it. So, but the fact remains, you can always resubmit either to that journal or somewhere else. 
with the, the comments they gave you and then it really helps you to improve the manuscript. Anyone else, any more questions? Or additions, suggestions? Okay. It seems that we don't have, okay, Maria, you have another hand. Yes, doctor, I also want to find out. Mm -hmm. So you find that some papers, uh, looking at the reference list, you only have few, very, very few um, uh, references, and then others, you, you have quite a lot of um, uh, references. So does that mean that if, if one has too many references, the paper is not really that good or uh, how does that come into play when it comes to a publication? Um, Over to you. This one is tricky, but I, I will try to handle it from my perspective. When I look at uh, work, I'm not looking at the number of references, but I'm rather looking at whether you have omitted reasonably important references, right? So there are some fields where if the person is going through your work, they will know like, okay, you are talking about this topic. There's no way I'm not going to see this person or at least this person or this. Or maybe uh, you only have um, references from, we are in 2024, 2024. Like you are talking about the theory and it was developed, you are using a reference from 2024 when something has been used for the longest time. So those are, I think for me will be the more than looking at the number. If you have omitted essential or if you have written things that I know has been said before, but you did not cite, I think that plays a role because maybe it depends from field to field. Some of the fields, maybe there's not so many people worked on that particular subject in that particular area. So you might have limited, but did the person omit important references? Did they cover everything that they were supposed to cover in their literature? Or they are not even giving you what is the previous work that has been done in that particular area, right? So I don't think the, the numbering, but sometimes it's, it's just to feel that it's so difficult for you to sub, um, motivate your work. Why is it important? Unless if you are saying no one ever has done this, which is unlikely, um, there's always something related or something close or something closer to that area that can be used. That's why it could be that they have less references. I, I never look at the number, but rather to the quality of the referencing, whether it's done properly or not. Yes. Uh, thank you. Any other question? Uh, yeah. Yes, Beata. Yes, yeah, good evening, Doc. Good evening. Uh, thank you for the presentation. I just want to ask, like, how is there a limit on uh, how many times do I have to cite an article? Cite it in one in one document. You mean? Yes. I I don't know. Maybe Doctor Benza, are you able to help? I don't think there is a specific number, but it should just not be that you are copying somebody's. Uh, work like as if they are only I, I actually gave one of my students I was going through her proposal today and she wrote like I don't know how many times just one reference while I know there are so many people that are, have written in that and then it becomes a problem but I don't think there is a specific I don't know I'm not sure yeah uh, I, I agree you. I agree with that. I think um you can cite a paper as many times as you can, but what that also suggests is that you just took one paper and everything, your references are all coming from that paper. So at least you have to look at it from both points of view. Yeah. But there isn't a limit. Yeah. 
Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. I think we are well in time. If there are no more questions, uh, we use about one hour, 30 minutes. So thank you guys for joining. Uh, where we, I will share the recording on, on YouTube, but I will also share the, the presentation notes with everyone who has registered. Have a blessed evening ahead. Or Dave, to some better, if in the United States, it should be day right now, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so have a good day ahead. All right, thank you. Thank you, Doc. Thank you, Doc. Thank you for the best. All right, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye.